Hi guys, my name is Anne Kreis. I hope you're doing well and I welcome you to a new video. When we're working with object-oriented programming languages, we always face the task of converting a business entity to a software object or a model of it. When implementing architecture approaches like domain-driven design or the well-known clean architecture in the context of Android development, we often not only create one, but multiple representations of a business entity. That can, for example, be a domain object, a data access object, or also a data transfer object. And in that context, also called DTOs, we often end up with not one, but really like two or three representations. For example, if you're working with an API, you need a DTO that's responsible for sending the data for creating a new object, one for receiving the result, or also one for just updating the data. In your application itself, you then often face a repetitive task of converting these representations to each other. In many applications, there are even own classes, so-called mapper classes, that are only responsible for converting these objects to each other. Of course, in Kotlin, you have also the option to define extension functions that can be created on such an, a representation and then create another object of it. It can be done by using the constructor of each object. In each of those mapping functions, it's always the goal to actually map the constructor of our target object. So we always have a source object that we want to convert into another representation. Because I by myself face this task from day to day and it sometimes really annoys me, I came up with the idea of implementing an own compiler plugin. The result is the KSP compiler plugin called KCON Mapper. This Kotlin constructor mapper facilitates your day-to-day -day working process in the simple manner of annotating the classes you want to convert. And with KSP, it's then possible to generate such mapping functions automatically. How we can actually use this plugin or library inside your project is what we're going to take a look at. And we will also see an example of previously defining those functions by yourself and then how we can annotate our classes to automatically generate those mapping functions. So now here inside a sample project, we have um, yeah, a user entity that is present in many apps, I would say, and also not in, uh, only in apps, but also in yeah, uh, Spring Boot backend project, for example, which can also be used uh, or written in Kotlin. This is an example of how we have an user domain object and then there's a function to convert it into a DTO and also into an entity, which is yeah, the representation for the database object, finally. So if we look into one of those classes, we can see that many times those properties contained in those classes are often the same and they are most of the time also named the same. That is not by accident, but of course, you always want to have the same naming of those properties. And the KCON Mapper plugin makes use of these um, properties in the form that we map those variables that are named the same and have the same type and automatically generate such a mapping function. And how we can do that is the next thing we are going to look at. So to introduce the KCO Mapper plugin into our project, the first thing we need to do is to go to our app level module uh, build grader. And here we now introduce the KSP plugin. And you do that by adding the following ID from Google um, devtools.ksp. And then next part is that we want to add our respective Kotlin version or KSP version that considers our current used Kotlin version. So to check that, we go into our project file here. And as you can see, I am using Kotlin 1.8.0. With my Kotlin version in mind, uh, let's go to the actual KSP GitHub repository and to the release pages. I will link the page down in the description. And now, because I have uh, Kotlin version 1.8.0, 
this is my version to go at the time of this video. Of course, if you, for example, are using uh, Kotlin 1.7.21 or 21, then you should use this latest version here. So now back at our project, I can specify the version, which is version 1.8.0. And here we say 1.0.8. Now I only need to sync. And the next thing we need to do is to actually introduce the KCON mapper dependency. But to do so, we first need to introduce the JITpack repository into our project because it's hosted there. And therefore, we go to our settings cradle. Or in some project, it might be also on the uh, project build cradle file. And here under repositories, I additionally add the maven url and then https jitpack.io once again we sync and now we should have access to all the artifacts hosted at jitpack.io so the next step and final step for introducing the dependency is to go to the build gradle and here we scroll down to our dependency section and here we now add two dependencies. First, the actual dependency for using the annotations. Um, and that is implementation. And then com.github. Um, mapper, And the artifact name is annotations. And the version um, is currently 1.0.0. .0 .0. Alpha 0, 3. So by introducing this dependency here, we can access the annotations. And the next thing we need to do is to add the actual KSP code. And that is the same as here. But instead of annotations, it's called KSP. So by introducing this uh, later, when we start an actual KSP process, it will pick up um, the code generation from this uh, yeah, artifact. So let's sync. And now we can go back to our user here. And let's say our goal is to replace those mapping files here. And that is really easy to do. We just now need to introduce our KCON mapper annotation. And here you can see you have two options. You can either say I want to map from the annotated class, so the user class, to another class, which would be here user DTO or user entity. Or we can say we want to map from another class to the annotated class. In our case, we want to map to the user DTO and the user entity. So we annotate those classes. We say to classes and then a new array user DTO and we use the class reference and also the user entity class reference. Now we can get rid of those functions here. So let's delete them. Now I only need to start our build process, but um, one step is still missing because we could generate them. Let's quickly see how they would look like. I click on make project. And now the build process automatically includes the KSP process. So we switch now to the project view here. And then in our app folder, build, generated, and then we can already see KSP. We can see that we here now have a new file called user KCON mapper extensions. And if we visit this file here, we can see that exactly those functions we just created are here. And one is the to user DTO and one is the to user entity. If we want to use these functions now, let's say, um, let's quickly jump to here. And I don't know, let's say we have a function here and we would have a um, user and let's quickly fill it with some um, arguments um, and then we want to map it to a user DTO 
you will see that ah, no extension is visible because there's one step missing. And that is that we actually uh, allow the project to access those generated files. And we can do that by going back to our um, Android view first. And then we go into our build Gradle module app again. Scroll up. And then we introduce another code block here. So in order to use the functions, we just need to declare new source sets. Um, we do this by yeah, first being in our Android block here. And now we can say source sets configure each. And then say Kotlin dot source directory. And now we reference first the build directory and then say generated KSP name of the current source set and then Kotlin. So it's essentially the same as we just saw in the generated folder. We now sync and go back to our main activity. We can now see type in two. We see uh, the two user DTO and also the two user entity. So let's say uh, to user DTO and then I can just say user DTO and we have the mapping function in place. But of course, now not by manually defining it, but by auto generating it. Of course, if we go back, as we previously saw, we also have um, the other way around from classes. And if we now um, once again say user DTO and user entity, we now say um, from user DTO and user entity map to the user class. And if I now once again make the project here once again it's generated and if i now go into the generated files we can now see that uh, two more functions uh, got generated we now have a function from the user entity to the user and also one from the user dto to the user well those examples are quite simple what if one of these functions here doesn't match uh, the variable name so let's say in the user DTO, there might be also an age, but it's not called age, but age in years, for example. If we now once again make the project, so now you can see no value passed for parameter age in years. So now we will need to manually pass in a year value, for example, 23. But of course, all the other functions still get mapped correctly. So even if you have two models that don't exactly match, you can still provide the missing values by yourself. How can we fix that? Let's go back to our user. And now that we know that some of these values are equal to the age, but have a different name, we can say KCON mapper property and define here some aliases. One of them is age in years. And if we now make the project again, we can see that this value is now not required anymore. And if we go into this function, we can see that age and years now map to this age. And that's essential how the library works. You can automatically generate your mapping functions. In most cases, you don't need to do it by yourself anymore. And the library is currently in an alpha version. That means it's not production ready, but please try it out and let me know what you think about it. I'm really dependent on your feedback and if you find some bugs or some things that you would expect uh, that it work or don't work, please reach out to me, file an issue on GitHub and also start the library. I would be really happy about it. And as always, I hope you had some takeaways. Like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, activate the notification bell and I hope to see you soon.